Shalom Yash Allah. I'm gonna start by saying all praise, all glory, all honor, all blessing, all power belong to our power, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Yaquakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that teach us will well and wool will well. Salutation to the Akian that's in highways and byways doing this work and truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And much respect unto the elect and the hopeful elect, sons and daughters of Yashala that step in the way of righteousness in the name of Yahweh. Wa Yahweh Shamashiach. Shalom. Shalom. That is lesson. It's about uh, Putin saying it's going to help uh, its allies with weapons with, by any means necessary, right? And that's, it. that's that's factual that the Bible speak of those things, right? That our power, Yahweh, by Hashem, our Shai, give, give us the prophecy that... Um, Gog and Magog will do those things in the last days. And what, what's doing right now? Gog and Magog is calling the West, aka Babylon the Great, aka America, aka Rome, reborn. And the EU, right, for the hypocrisy, right? And all the atrocity they have done upon the earth, right? Let's see for yourself, Yashallah. Uh, this is from True Info. Putin's chilling message to the West at the 10 Moscow Conference on International Security. That was three days ago, right? Russia will protect all its allies, right? And that's prophecy. That's exactly what the Lord are putting in the book for. And prophecy is speaking loud and clear let's 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 hear what a the prince of of gog have to say gog the prince right of meshach is saying right The situation in the world is changing dynamically and the outlines of a multipolar world order are taking shape. An increasing number of countries and peoples are choosing a path of free and sovereign development based on their own distinct identity, traditions and values. These objective processes are being opposed by the Western globalist elites who provoke chaos. Fanning long-standing and new conflicts and pursuing. You see, that's he's talking about the, the global elite, the elite, the, the banker, the international bankers, right? The Rothschilds, Rockefellers, right? He's speaking directly to those things. But those things, what he's saying right now, this man is an insider, right? He knows those things already. I could never really try to rectify those things, right? And he got enough power in, in, in this world to do those things, right? I come now, he's talking about it like that. It's crazy side. They play in both sides of, of the fence, right? You see, we're not gonna be uh like he said, let's bring let's bring the scripture right here first Corinthians, you know. That's the scripture, right? When you come to Esau, like the Bible said, never trust thy enemy, right? They're still enemies, even though they got alliances that they're making, it's prophecy. But never trust your enemy, because your enemy is always playing a game. And you have to be always ahead of that game, right? Seven Corinthians are the two, uh, verse 11. Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. You see? We're not ignorant of certain devices, of the adversary devices, right? At the end of the day, uh, Russia is not for us. Gog and Magog is not for, for Yasha Allah. Babylon is not for Yasha Allah. The EU, the peace system that, that rise about EU, 
it's not for 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 yash allah it's not for the so-called black latin and american it's not for our advantage but the lord is the master of a master plan right and the master plan of yahweh why yahusha mashiach is playing upon the earth right now using uh those actors right as you can see right moving pieces that's the word lord the lord is is, is a is a man of war and the strategy of war is fighting a war in every front politically militarily and financially right and spiritually you see the lord is fighting all fighting against the enemy in all four fronts right and all fronts and in making uh, those nations do what he wants them to do and that's that's who you're dealing with right now if you have to know your your power your how about you shout to know those things because the lord say you reveal his secret but unto the prophets the teachers that's who those he set up right the lord the pastor that the lord have set up to teach those things right the lord don't just reveal those things unto uh unto uh in many final the prophets no the lord doesn't do that the lord know exactly who he's choosing and who is going to send the highways and byways to speak those words, right? Starting with the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, and all the Achaeum that's in highways and byways, likewise pushing the same thing, right? And prophesies against uh, the, this world we live in, this age, right? At the end of the day, when, 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 when the enemy talk, even he's talking against Babylon, against the, the, the global elite, you have to watch with a looking glass, right? Because uh, there are always two sides to a story. And he might be playing his, his, his side better than the other side. But at the end of the day, it's the same coin, but different side, right? Because they all want to rule over Yasha Allah. So that's what you have to see. Now, just because I'm, I'm playing the video of, of Putin, so I, I, I'm for Putin, because it's, at the end of the day, it's our enemies, right? The so-called containment policy, which in fact amounts to the subversion of any alternative sovereign development options. Thus, they are doing all they can to keep hold onto the hegemony and power that are slipping from their hands. They are attempting to retain countries and peoples in the grip of what is essentially a neo-colonial order. And that's the strategy of the Lord. Esau, Edom is losing power. The global elite are losing power throughout the four corners of the earth. Babylon is falling. You see? The petrol dollar is not worth anything anymore. It got no, it got doesn't have the same power that you used to have, and that's when you know Esau is losing the power, and his kingdom is divided. Right, and that's exactly what we see right now. Let's let's go to uh, a match you. Yeah, so that, let's, go, let's go to Mark first, right? Let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Uh, Matthew 12, verse 25. And Yahweh shall know their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house is divided against itself shall not stand. What you're seeing right now. Is breaking of the order, right? For a very long time, they were playing both sides, okay, of the same wall, acting like they're divided, but they were not. But now we seen the divide. The Lord is putting that that spirit, okay, now on this earth right now, and it's dividing Esau Edom. There used to be like you got this part, I got this, this spot, this spot right here, and we're gonna stay that way, right? 
making deals, paying a washer. Everything was all good. But now, the kingdom is being divided more and more. And there's nothing left. It's to fall and wars, right? Verse 26 is sitting, cast out sitting, is divided against himself. You see, a uh, Putin, which is, 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 is an Edomite, is telling all the secret of the West and the EU that it was once part of, right? The G20, the old part of G20 console that was against the Israelites. And now he's speaking against them, right? And, and that's the thing. Now this kingdom is divided and they're about to come to resolution. War is about to start. And that's exactly what time we are in right now. Let's keep playing. The hegemony means stagnation for the rest of the world and for the entire civilization. It means obscure. You wanted me to catch you cheating on me with Billy. Why, Kathy? I didn't know how else to break up. Urantism, cancellation of culture, and neoliberal totalitarianism. They are using all expedients. They cancel a culture of nations, right? That's exactly what they have done. You see? All those things are prophecy, speaking in the Bible, right? Let's go to Mika, right? Mika chapter 2, verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. See, it's in the power of their hand. They've been over the earth for a very long time to a colonial mean, mean, okay, mean, to colonial mean, right? So they have done all those wickedness upon this earth, right? Because it's in the power of their hand. We we'll give them power, Yahweh power by Hashem Yahushai, give them that power. Because the hand is, is given to earth, the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked, right? And you stay wicked, he saw Edom. They be having the earth, they be having good throughout the earth and for power get uh, wickedness, right? Verse 2 And they cover fail and take them by violence and houses and take them away so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Let's see. Let's see this man talk again, right? But in the grip of what is essentially a neo-colonial order. The hegemony means stagnation for the rest of the world and for the entire civilization. It means obscurantism, cancellation of culture, and neoliberal totalitarianism. They are using all expedients. The United States and its vassals grossly interfere in the internal affairs of sovereign states by staging provocations, organizing coups, or inciting civil wars. By threats, blackmail, and pressure, they are trying to force independent states to submit to their will and follow rules that are alien to them. This is being done with just one aim in view, which is to preserve their domination, the centuries-old model that enables them to sponge on everything in the world. But a model of this sort can only be retained by force. See, as you can see. All those, those things talking about, like, are they oppressed people throughout the four corners of the earth, right? And then for them to retain it, there is, is by force, right? When you put uh, uh, a man in his last leg, right? I mean, that, that, that was at the top, right? When he lose everything, he gonna lose, he gonna lose it, right? A man that was so greedy, for him to see someone else uh, have a part of it, if he's if he not gonna have a part of it, he's gonna take it. No one gonna have a part of it. That's the that's the kind of man we're dealing with, right? Have a cook. Have a cook. Chapter two, verse four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up. It's not upright in him, but the judge shall live by faith. See, this man's soul, that's up, up, that's in him. It's not upright. That's, 
it's not upon him okay his soul is lifted up i mean he's a very pride man all right verse five he also because he transgressed by wine is he is a pride man okay he's a very pride man right because they boast of their riches they both of the weapons they have right he they keep it at home who enlarge his desire as hell and his eyes death and cannot be satisfied but gather unto him all nation and hate unto him all people you see at the end of the day when Esau find out it's not gonna have whatever they want when the global elite which are ruled by Esau Edom when they find out they cannot have everything they want they're gonna use force deadly force and that's all they know everything they have is by the, is by the sword and that was the blessing right let's show you that, that was the blessing Genesis 27, verse 40. Uh, uh, Genesis 27, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? My father, bless me, even me also, or my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. He cried, he cried like a baby, right? And as his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thy live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when shall have dominion that shall break his yoke from of, from of thy neck, right? Guess what? He shall break the yoke that was in his neck when David, when our father David, right, was in power. He saw was under us, he still was serving us. And they break their yoke. When in the dark ages when they were ruling, they were under us, they break their yoke. Again, right? Now, that's the last 12 for, for, when they broke that yoke, they power, they got the fatness of the earth, they got everything under the control, they got the petrol dollar, they got all the goals, right? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing, where wait his father bless him, and Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. And that's exactly what's going on. Esau hated Jacob, right? And now Esau is in power. By the blessing of the sword and they're gonna try to use the sword again and they're gonna use it because that's the blessing to try to take it what 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 they're losing right let's keep playing this is why the collective West, the so-called collective West, is deliberately undermining the European security system and knocking together ever new military alliances. NATO is crawling east and building up its military infrastructure. Among other things, it is deploying missile defense systems and enhancing the strike capabilities of its offensive forces. This is hypocritically attributed to the need to strengthen security in Europe, but in fact quite the opposite is taking place. Moreover, the proposals on mutual security measures, which Russia put forward last December, were once again disregarded. They need conflicts to retain their hegemony. It is for this reason that they have destined the Ukrainian people to being used as cannon fodder. They have implemented the anti-Russia project and connived at the dissemination of the neo-Nazi ideology. They looked the other way when residents of Donbass were killed in their thousands and continued to pour weapons, including heavy weapons, for use by the Kiev regime, something that they persist in doing now. Under these circumstances, we have taken the decision to conduct a special military operation in Ukraine, a decision which is in full conformity with the Charter of the United Nations. It has been clearly spelled out that the aims of this operation are to ensure the security of Russia and its citizens and protect the residents of Donbass from genocide. 
the situation in Ukraine shows that the United States is attempting to draw out this conflict. It acts in the same way elsewhere, fomenting the conflict potential in Asia, Africa and Latin America. As is common knowledge, the US has recently made another deliberate attempt to fuel the flames and stir up trouble in the Asia Pacific. The US escapade towards the US affluent flame not only Asia, uh, South America, uh, Europe, and everything like that, right? especially, you see, the Lord, you see, and that's the thing, and Yahweh power by Hashem, Yahweh is beautiful in all his ways, right, yeah, like our Lord and Savior, Yahweh speak all those things, right, um, let's go to Matthew, Matthew 24, verse 6, and it shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be not trouble, for all those things will come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake and diverse places. Right? And that's exactly that's the thing we're in right now. It's it, putting it's talking about it right now. They're trying to start conflict throughout the four corners of the earth. Wars and rumors of wars, right? And they try to incite those wars by any means necessary so they can keep power. So, you see? And that's the men we're dealing with. A bloodthirsty man, which is Esau Edom. He's the soul that's in him. It's not all bright in him, but the joy soul lived by faith. He's as deaf and cannot be satisfied. This man cannot be satisfied with his have. He has the finest of the earth. And still not satisfied. That's the kind of man we're living with. And with all those things going on the earth, you have power by Hashem Yahweh Shai in, in Isaiah 19, right? 19 and 14, right? Isaiah 19, verse 14. You have power by Hashem Yahweh Shai have mingled a perverse spirit and they miss their off and they have caused Egypt to err and every work thereof. As a drunken man staggered and is on for me. You see, they're airing right now. Look, they have as president. Who's their foot as president? A man that couldn't even help himself. A man that could even talk to himself if he wanted to. Without someone giving direction, right? Is the leader is in shambles. Babylon is in shambles. His economy is, is thinking. Babylon is actually falling, Yash Allah. And our people of Yahshua Allah refuse to see those things. Right? Because Yahweh power by Hashem Yahshua have put a mango, a mango, a perfect spirit in Babylon and Egypt, spiritually Egypt. Which is known as Sodom, spiritually Egypt and Sodom. That's the land we live in right now. The Babylon the Great, spiritually Egypt and Sodom, aka America, aka Rome. Right? Let's play this. Taiwan is not just a voyage by an irresponsible politician, but part of the purpose-oriented and deliberate U.S. strategy designed to destabilize the situation and sow chaos in the region and the world. It is a brazen demonstration of disrespect for other countries and their own international commitments. We regard this as a thoroughly planned provocation. It is clear that by taking these actions the Western globalist elites are attempting, among other things, to divert the attention of their own citizens from pressing socio-economic problems such as plummeting living standards, unemployment, poverty and deindustrialization. They want to shift the blame for their own failures to other countries, namely Russia and China, which are defending their point of view and designing a sovereign development policy without submitting to the dictator of the supranational elites. We also see that the collective West is striving to expand its bloc-based system to the Asia-Pacific region, like it did with NATO in Europe. 
To this end, they are creating aggressive military political unions such as AUKUS and others. It is obvious that it is only possible to reduce tensions in the world, overcome military political threats and risks, improve trust between countries and ensure their sustainable development through a radical strengthening of the contemporary system of a multipolar world. I reiterate that the era of the unipolar world is becoming a thing of the past. No matter how strongly the beneficiaries of the current globalist model cling to the familiar state of affairs, it is doomed. The historic geopolitical changes are going in a totally different direction. And, of course, your conference is another important proof of the objective processes forming a multipolar world bringing together representatives from many countries who want to discuss security issues on an equal footing and conduct a dialogue that takes into account the interests of all parties, without exception. I want to emphasize that the multipolar world, based on international law and more just relations, opens up new opportunities for counteracting common threats, such as regional conflicts and the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, terrorism and cybercrime. All these challenges are global, and therefore it would be impossible to overcome them without combining the efforts and potentials of all states. As before, Russia will actively and assertively participate in such coordinated joint efforts, together with its allies, partners and fellow thinkers, it will improve the existing mechanisms of international security and create new You see, it's just told you right now that Russia will participate with its allies, protect them, give them weapons and everything like that, right? And all those things are prophecy, right? Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 38. exactly what we are looking for, right? Ezekiel 38 verse 1, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach. You see, the chief prince of Meshach right now is Putin, right? Hopefully that's the man right here, that's the prince right there, right? But Gog, Magog, is washer. And to bow and prophesy against him, and say, Thus said Yahweh power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshef and Tubal. See? We prophesy against Russia right now, right? We prophesy against Babylon, against Esau, Edom. And tell them that the Lord is against them. But guess what? The Lord is still going to use Gog and Magog to do his bidding, right? As you can see, the Lord prophesy against him. Just because you see Putin is talking like that, it's still our enemies. We still have to look at, at those people with a looking glass. There's something deeper that's playing around right now, right? And you have to be able to see those things. Uh, verse 4, And I will turn thee back and put hooks onto thy drawers, right? The Lord say, Russia was drawn back. Russia was in the back for a very long time. Russia didn't get any conflict, but he just did to himself. Now, Russia is back. Russia is it's like a gorilla right now. It's beating, beating its chest right now because it's feeling actually strong. It's no longer weak right now because the Lord put that hook in his mouth, right? And his jaws. I will bring thee forth and all thy armies, horsemen, horse and horse, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sort of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handle sword, right? Now, you see, Russia got all kind of weapons, right? Weapon of mass destruction, missile, nuclear missile, all those things, right? Watch, I got all those things ready for Babylon and the EU to fight against the base systems, right? That's coming, right? Persia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them, all of them with shield and helmet, right? That's the old nation, that's all the alliance Russia I have right now. Gomer and all his bands, the house of uh, Tagoma of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. You see, they have all those nations that Putin was talking about, all with a, a Gog and Magog, right? Be to prepare and prepare thyself though 
and all thy company that assemble unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Russia is one of the most powerful country military, really, right? And it's gonna be a guard unto all those nations. And that's why they put they, they're doing all those alliances, right? Because then Russia gonna be a guard unto them, right? If then it's weapon, Russia gonna sell it to them, or they are actually gonna give it to them, right? To protect them, to guard them, right? That's what the Lord is is putting that that hook and the draw of Russia to say, yo. A beat your stomach right now and say you're strong right now. You got all those weapons, right? And Russia is being strong financially with, with China. See? And Russia is being a god, and that's the point of the lesson. Russia is a god, but the Lord got, got a better message for, for all those nations. As much as Russia is a god unto those nations, but the Lord got a bigger message, right? Let's get it. I think it's in Amos. Joel, it's in Joel. Okay, let's get Joel. Oh, no, no, no. Joel, Joel. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Let's go, Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up, right? That's the joy that the power power by Shemiah Shah put in the mouth of Gog and Megal. See them, I'm strong. The mighty man, Russia got some mighty men. They always put in, hey, Russia is all in before y'all. My men are strong. They're ready for war. They're ready for fight. That's, that's, that's the Lord is doing it. The Lord is putting that spirit and God can make God to be ready for wars, right? Wake up that mighty man. Beat your pressure onto swords. Russia is doing this thing right now. They're preparing their wars, their weapons, and all those countries are buying those weapons, right? And they construct it like countries like Iran, right? They're doing their own, they have their own missile program, right? Beat your plashes onto sword and your pony hooks onto spears. Let the weak stay am strong. A spear is a weapon of wars, and that's exactly what they're preparing, right? Verse 11 Assemble yourself and come, all ye hidden, and gather yourself together one about, till the cause that mighty ones to come down. With your how about what right? that's exactly what's going on right now those nations are, are being assembled so they can fight right let the hidden be awakening and come up and to the valley of Josephus. for there will i sit to judge all the hidden one about you see that's exactly what's going on right now Yashallah. the lord is about to judge the hidden nations and out to tell of our people too, because they they, they they are in a hidden state of mind. Yeah, how about bashing our shagan and judge them too? Joel chapter 3, verse 13. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is wild. Come and get you down, for the press is full, the fast overflow, for their wickedness is great. You see? Multitude, multitude, and the valley of decision for the day of Yahweh is near, and the valley of decision. You see? To end the war, to end all war, it's, it's, it's at hand, Yasha Allah. It's coming. And those nations have been assembled by the Most High, by the Spirit that the Most High put upon the earth right now. And, and Gog and Magog is ready to go to war with Babylon. Right? And they're going to do it in, in, the, in, the, in the valley of decision that the, the Lord has prepared since the beginning of time for this war to happen and that's when Yahweh Shamashiach our Lord and Savior our King of Kings that Yahweh power that our Abana Yahweh have sent unto us to save us right and, and Yahweh Shamashiach gonna do a lot of damage on those times and a lot of killing on those times right and that's how we pray to Abana Yahweh for do those things for us right and that's exactly the time that we are in right now, right? Because guess what? Russia, all those nations are tired of America, of the uh, in the West, of the way that they've been doing those dealings. And Yahweh Power is tired of him too. 
who says the saints of Babylon have reached the heavens. Right? Let's get to Jeremiah. That's the last scripture we're gonna bring out, right? Jeremiah 15 and 23. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 23. Uh, verse 22, that's chapter 22. A sound of battle is in the land and a great destruction. There's a great destruction coming. There's a sound of battle. All he's talking about is how they're different than their own nations. That a Babylon have done all this destruction, right? But there's a sound of battle. There's a big battle coming, right? How is the harvest of the whole earth could ascend and broken? Slowly but surely. Hey, Yahweh power by Hashem Yahushai is broken in the mind of the prince of Mishif, right? Gog, right? They're playing chess right now. They're playing chess and checkers right now, right? They're truly playing a chess, and a chess game right now. And one of them is winning. Right? And Yahweh, but at the end of the day, Yahweh power is winning. And those that dwell in heaven, that's that dwell in the, in, in, in the place, in the habitation of the Most High, are rejoicing right now. Verse 23, I start hammer of the whole earth called ascender and broken. How is Babylon become a desolation among the heathen? That's what's coming for Babylon. Babylon can be a desolation among the heathen, among the nations. Verse 24, I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art taken, O Babylon, though was not aware. Babylon is not aware. They're trying to fight those things. But the Lord put them in a slippery place. Okay? And the Lord lay a snare for them. Thou are found and also cut. Because they are striving against Yahweh. Babylon are striving against Yahweh. Are striving against Yahweh by putting the, the people of Yahweh by Hashem Yahusha in slavery till this day and fighting against our awakening by giving us all kind of names and they're striving against the Lord and the name of the Lord is not known in Babylon until the prophet showed up and put and declare and publish the name of Yahweh, why Yahusha Mashiach, and all his words, and the highways and bowers, telling all the nations in Babylon that the Lord is coming for, to destroy them and put all the hidden nation in subjection and slavery. And that's the message that the Lord have, have brought, right? And that's the word they've been against. They refuse, they, they, they buckle up against the word of the Lord. And that's a losing battle. And with that, I hope my brothers and sisters was edified. I'm going to give all praise, all glory, all honor, all blessing, all wisdom, all power belong to our power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone that teach us well, well and, and rule well, well. Salutation to the Akiam that's in the highways and bowers doing this work and truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom, Abba Baba, come Yashua Allah.